Pavlina Cherneva is uh, with our uh, with our program today, talking. Uh, she's a, uh, an economist, a professor, and an author. Uh, she wrote a brilliant piece. What would FDR do in today's crisis? Check it out. Leave your comments. Ding the bell. Share it with your friends. And please subscribe to our channel. And welcome back. Tom Hartman here with you. And on the line with us is Pavlina T Cherneva, uh, the Asso Associate Professor of Economics at Bard College, former economics advisor to Bernie Sanders' campaign, uh, also a research scholar with Levy Economics Institute and author of the forthcoming book, The Case for a Job Guarantee, which I'm sure you can uh, pre-order in uh, whatever bookstore you'd like. Uh, the website is Pavlina, P-A-V-L-I-N-A dash Cherneva, uh, T-C-H-E-R-N-E-V-A dot net. And P-T-C-H-E-R-N-E-V-A is her Twitter handle. Pavlina, welcome to the program. Hi, Tom. Thank you for having me. Or I should say, Professor, welcome to the program. You wrote a brilliant piece for Project Syndicate titled, What Would Roosevelt Do? And, and, you, and you go through, you know, how should the government respond and you have the various steps uh, that you would prioritize. You want to run through that for us? Yes, this is not your garden variety recession. It's not even comparable quite to the Great Depression, although we may see the sort of unemployment levels we saw then and even higher. The Federal Reserve is, a, is forecasting um, up to 30, 32 percent unemployment. So we are in for some very rough times. We cannot respond to those with conventional stimulus measures as they're conceived today. And the lesson from Roosevelt is mobilize. Mobilize today, mobilize tomorrow. So, you know, we have some very concrete things we have to do today. Uh, we see the acute shortages in um, the healthcare sector. So right now, at this moment, we need to mobilize not just production of medical equipment and protective gear and ventilators and all of that. We also have shortage of staff in acute areas, manning the phone lines from the 911 phone lines to dispatchers, to training nurses, to attending to the elderly. So there is still a fair amount of work to be done, even as we do social distancing. And we also need to think very hard about protecting those who cannot work and uh, are losing their jobs. But we also have to think a little bit past the next two or three months and think about an economy that is going to have to reopen, turn on the lights with a lot of people who are unemployed. And my message for that time will be mobilize again. Yeah. So... Uh... <sighs> To what extent is this something that's done by government versus something that's done by people, um, businesses? I mean, where, how do you break that out? And, and, you know, what would FDR say about, you know, the current response to this uh, crisis? Yeah, I mean, the, the big burden of responsibility on dealing with this crisis falls on the public sector. This is why we have a public sector to provide the necessary investments and protections when all of us face some sort of existential crisis. And we have for so many decades lived and accepted this rhetoric that the government can't do much and it has to be downside and it's been assaulted with austerity after austerity that we are wholly unprepared. And so we have, you know, both this ideology that's hanging over us and at the same time, we don't have the bold measures that this this time calls for. So I think if, you know, <laughs> if Roosevelt were to look at what we're doing today, he would say, you're dilly-dallying. You've got to start mm. thinking about planning, about investment, direct investment in these critical areas I was mentioning. But even tomorrow, uh, we need to directly go to the heart of the problem, and the government will have to lead it has to do the heavy lifting in terms of public investment and public employment um, to uh, recover the economy. But right now, if, you know, if, if we were to try to do something like uh, the New Deal, where FDR hired millions and millions of unemployed Americans and put them to work doing everything from painting murals to building dams and, and planting millions of trees, um, people are not supposed to leave their homes right now. I mean, it, this, is a, this is a crisis that, uh, to the best of my knowledge, has never really been confronted before. I think you could argue maybe the 1918-1919 flu pandemic, but um, I don't recall that Woodrow Wilson did any huge stimulus measures or any, you know, dealt with that the way that we're having to deal with this. Um, what, you know, short of uh, infrastructure and construction projects and, and uh, employer of last resort, I mean, I love 
going back to FDR's Second New Deal, you know, the, the right to housing, the right to an education, the right to health care, the right to a, a job that pays well. Um, three of the four of those could be done during this time. And a right means, of course, that the government guarantees that you have it or prevents others from taking it from you. Um, where, where specifically would you start with all this? If you were okay, uh, today, president. yeah, absolutely. Well, today we have to pay people to stay home, no question about it. So even mm-hmm. even the term stimulus is not the appropriate term uh, at this moment. But what uh, we could do, and you know, listeners should should be very clear that we just passed an extraordinary package in two trillion dollars, you know, about ten percent of GDP, literally overnight, and that package is wholly inadequate in terms of the provisions to protect families and, you know, states and the healthcare providers as well, but families in particular. And then, of course, it has, you know, a very generous corporate bailout in there. And uh, so what we what we need to do is definitely protect people and incentivize them to stay at home without the fear for their jobs. And, you know, I did some very back-of-the-envelope calculations and found out that if we can, if we went the Nordic route, if we decided to pay, for the government to pay a proportion of the wages for those who are threatened, we actually have many times over the budget. The budget that was passed is enough to pay everybody's wage for the next three months. So we we have the firepower, we have the financing, but we have gone the wrong way. And so I would have done every measure possible to protect jobs now because it's so much harder to create jobs tomorrow when you're faced mm-hmm. with avalanche of jobs. So that would be the first thing that mm-hmm. I would do. But the second thing is, you know, Roosevelt, like you said, with the second New Deal, he wasn't just thinking, well, let's just provide employment for the unemployed. He asked the question, what is the role of government? How can we secure some basic economic rights? And we need right. to ask that and, question and, today. Yeah, I, I, I am absolutely with you. Um, it's uh, thought-provoking. It's brilliant. What would Roosevelt do by Pavlina Cherneva? And uh, uh, Professor, thank you so much for dropping by today. Thank you for having me.